Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you basically take to bits an Acer Aspire V5-471 series laptop or otherwise known as model number MS2360. Um, I'm not sure whether you have to remove this but I removed it, it's the RAM door which is two screws. Um, all the screws on the underside of this laptop have different, or not every single one has different lengths, but some of them are different lengths. So it's a good idea to, and as you'll see me do, um, basically map out or put down the screws in a way where you will be able to put them back into the laptop in the correct order or in the correct place basically. So uh, some screws won't screw into the into other holes on the underside of the the machine. Uh, yeah, the machine I am working on is an Acer Aspire V5-471P for Papa, dash 323C for Charlie, 4G for Golf, 50MASS, um, so mass at the end, um, ridiculous model number, quite a nice laptop though. So remove the CD drive, that could be done later so you could unscrew all the screws and then take the CD drive out, but I prefer to, to start with that. The machine I'm repairing already has one screw missing from the underside, so you'll see that the next screw I can't unscrew, doesn't exist there. So I took out the memory stick or uh, SD card place holder and you'll want to flip the laptop over and remove the keyboard. So using some thin tool or like I use a, a very kind of pliable metal spatula which is a great tool. Basically start at the top of the keyboard it'll clip out and then go along the rest of the top and then down the edges and lift it up towards the screen. Careful because there are two ribbon cables on the underside, one for the keyboard possibly one for the backlight, I'm not actually sure what the uh, the second one's there for, but gently undo the, or uh, basically that one's like a tension clip, so you move the uh, spaces on, on the right and on the left of that clip towards the screen and it will loosen the ribbon cable which you can then very easily move out. The other one looked, in my case, was glued to the underside uh, or to the top of the case and that has just a little hinge plastic thing that you flip up and then can very easily detach those cables. You don't need to put any force onto those cables so if you're having to pull on them or you're, you're feeling like you're <laughs> putting much tension on them then you're, you probably haven't undone the clip. Now there are four screws. I didn't notice the last screw while recording this so you'll see me come back to that in a moment. but. Oh, sorry, five screws. So there's four kind of on the left hand part of the uh, case. You don't, you need to unplug 
that ribbon cable but you don't need to unglue it from the top of the case and there's a screw up on near the power button there's also another ribbon cable that you can do while you're at it which is uh, on the left as well but you'll see me come to that later so I've missed one screw which is in the very top right hand corner within the black border and it is a black screw so you basically don't notice that it's there so now it's just simply unclipping the case of the laptop as most laptops unclip you just put a tiny bit of pressure onto it work your way very slowly and surely around the edge until the whole thing's unclipped And you'll see here, I finally noticed that I've uh, one of my corners is still stuck down, which is that top right hand corner, because of the hidden screw in the top right. So I first look on the underside, nope, it's definitely held there by something, and eventually I'll put the machine down and find that small screw. A black screw on a black background and then here I've uh, forgotten to undo the touchpad ribbon cable which I just noticed there And that's basically it. So in my case I was repairing a smashed power connector or a smashed power socket but obviously once you're in here you can replace the hard disk or upgrade the hard disk um, or if you're that <laughs> you know you've got all the, the tools to do it uh, motherboard repair or obviously motherboard swap out replace the wireless card or replace the cooling fan maybe I don't know whether it's got you that deep into the machine or whether there's further stuff that you need to undo for that but it's a good start and now we're basically putting it back together so the lid just presses down, clips down around the corners and the edges reconnect the ribbon cables and put all the screws back in the correct places. As I say, um, it's a good idea to put things down in either pots or in, like I do, basically like a constellation or a, a layout of the places where I took them out of. So uh, if you look to the top of the video behind the laptop, basically the way those uh, screws are laid out on the table are exactly the way they need to go on the laptop, um, or you know, as close approximation as I can get without actually measuring it out centimetre by centimetre or millimetre by millimetre and then reconnect the two connections on the keyboard these are pretty fiddly basically slide the connector in and then on that one you hinge the uh, the the hinge down to put the tension back onto it and keep it in place and the keyboard one make sure that the two clips on the left and the right are upwards or kind of pushed towards the screen slide the connector in and then push the connection or those tabs back down towards you and it puts the tension back onto the connection then push the keyboard down on all the corners and the top and the bottom and we're ready to basically screw everything back together so put in the SD card spacer 
going to put the DVD drive back in And hopefully, after all of this, you turn the laptop over and turn it on and it works correctly. So with my repaired power socket, oops, forgotten to switch it on at the wall though, <laughs> got me confused for a little bit. And there we go, yes, backlit keyboard, so that extra lead for the keyboard must be the backlight. But there you go, that's how you take it to bits and put it back together.